There are many stories in the world of Formula One, and it's no secret that some drivers have had an easy path into the world's most prestigious category. However, there are plenty of drivers who came from humble beginnings and against the odds, but still managed to get their chance in Formula One and leave their mark in the history books. One of those stories is the humble rise of Esteban Ocon. Esteban Ocon was born on the 17th of September 1996 in Evreux, France. He is the son of Laurent, a mechanic who owns a garage in Evero and Sabrine. Esteban Ocon wasn't raised by wealthy parents, they were hard-working people dedicated to their son's talent, which was motor racing. Esteban began karting in 2006, and to fund his career, his parents made the decision to sell the family home and live out of a camper van. Esteban said about the situation, I was 11 or 12 years old, I remember everything. I couldn't afford to fail with all the sacrifices my parents made. They had faith in me. After all, it was a good life. Always on the move, I didn't mind living in a camper. While Esteban worked his way up in karting, he used the dedication and sacrifices his parents made as motivation to succeed, and failure was simply not an option for him. He would win a French karting championship in 2007 and a cadet class title in 2008, and went on to win the French KF3 title in 2010, and was runner-up in the WSK Euro Series in 20. 2011, finishing behind champion Max Verstappen. Ocon made his single-seater debut in the Formula Renault 2.0 series in 2012. From 2012 to 2013, he managed six podiums and two wins. In 2014, Esteban Ocon won the Formula 3 Euro title, though after this, the end of his career was kind of looking likely, until some quick recruitment by Toto Wolff saved him. Ocon then got a drive in GP3. He won the championship in his debut season and solidified himself as an up-and-coming driver to watch, with a Formula 1 seat being a real possibility for the future. Several teams showed some interest in Esteban, but his first Formula 1 drive was a test with Lotus in the E20 on the 22nd of October 2014. Roughly a month or so later, he would take part in a Formula 1 session at Abu Dhabi during Free Practice 1. In 2015, Esteban was called by Force India for a test in Barcelona. By this point, Ocon was already part of the Mercedes Academy, and there is one thing clear with a guy like Toto Wolff and an organisation like Mercedes. They want to keep their drivers active and in a Formula 1 car as much as possible. So in 2016, he became a Renault reserve driver and drove four free practice sessions for the team. On the 10th of August 2016, Manor Racing driver Rio Harianto was dropped by the team due to a contract issue with his sponsors. Manor announced Esteban Ocon as his replacement and he would partner Pascal Wehrlein for the remainder of the season. Manor was a backmarker team, not very competitive at all, and had some worrying financial issues lingering in the background. But either way, it was a golden opportunity for a driver like Esteban Ocon to find his feet in Formula 1 and gain some experience and possibly further prove his ability to attract larger teams on the grid. He would finish 16th on his debut in Spa, and his best finish would be P12 at a wild Brazilian Grand Prix, only falling out of the points on the final lap of the race. On the other hand, hand, their rival Sauber scored two points in that race, which put them above Manor in the constructors' standings, and Manor lost out on approximately £30 million of prize money. Manor was in a dire financial situation and scrambled to find investors for the next season. The parent company of Manor fell into administration and didn't compete in the 2017 season. Luckily for Esteban Ocon, he signed for Force India in November 2016, meaning he secured a seat for 2017 with a better team. There was plenty of excitement and hype around Ocon, a young talent finally driving for a team where he could score points and be somewhat competitive as opposed to being limited at a backmarker like Manor. Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez would form an interesting partnership at Force India, with the two being involved in some incidents throughout the season, but Ocon finished up the season with 87 points and Checo with 100 points. A pretty good showing for his first proper season in F1, one, Esteban showed consistency with 12 consecutive points finishes for the season and did enough to keep his seat for 2018. Unfortunately, Force India would run into financial troubles that year, but was saved by a buyout led by Lawrence Stroll, the father of Lance Stroll, who at the time was driving for Williams. It was pretty clear and obvious that Lance Stroll would eventually drive for the team, who his dad now owned, but Esteban Ocon had an informal agreement with Renault for 2019. Suddenly, this was 
thrown out after Daniel Ricciardo was confirmed as a Renault driver for 2019, leaving Ocon without a seat. Mercedes would come to the rescue, signing Ocon as a reserve driver for 2019. Ocon wouldn't take part in a race weekend all year, but claimed he was very close to a full-time Mercedes drive in 2020, nearly replacing Valtteri Bottas. Ocon would instead return to Formula 1 with Renault, partnering Daniel Ricciardo. It was an average sort of year for Esteban, but he managed a P2 finish at the Sakia Grand Prix. This was Renault's best result since 2010 and his first podium in F1. It would get better in 2021 though. Renault would rebrand to Alpine for 2021 and I'm going to take you straight to the Hungarian Grand Prix. With the season already being one of the most exciting and intense, the opening lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix was full of chaos. With a pile up at the first corner, it suddenly felt like one of those races where anything could happen. Esteban started 8th but was P2 after the first corner carnage. Esteban would lead the race after Lewis Hamilton's late pit stop and kept hold of P1, winning the Grand Prix. It truly was an incredible race, but an even more incredible story. Here was a guy with all the odds stacked against him, from humble beginnings with parents willing to risk it all if it meant their son had a better shot than they did. Standing on the top step of the podium, a place only a small amount of people have stood since the beginning of time. Esteban Ocon wasn't just the king of Formula 1 that day, he was, in some ways, the king of the world. He wasn't part of that billionaire boys club, he got to Formula 1 not through a rich dad or a future seat on a silver platter waiting for him. It was sheer hard work, risk and sacrifice. It was proof that you don't need a wealthy or privileged background to make it to the top. Just the talent, dedication and mindset to never give up no matter what. Esteban Ocon finished the 2021 season with 74 points compared to his teammate Fernando Alonso's 81. And in 2022, Esteban actually beat Fernando. Now to be fair, Alonso did have some horror reliability throughout the season. In 2023, Esteban will partner his old karting rival and fellow Frenchman Pierre Gasly. The two have had a rocky relationship, with some even suggesting a hatred between the two, though recently they seem to have buried the hatchet and have been spending some time together and also with Charles Leclerc. Esteban Ocon has one of the most inspiring stories in Formula 1. Even after his Formula 3 success, he was looking at the possibility of his racing career coming to an end, saying that if it wasn't for Toto Wolff, he would be working at McDonald's right now. Esteban Ocon's early years are a reality for many people in this world. Parents that will work and work and work to support their kids no matter what putting it all on the line in the hope that one day it'll pay off and give their child a better life. The Ocon family are an inspiration, beating the odds and creating one of the best Formula One success stories of all time.